popular toy designed in 1958 still has children and adults shaking their hips. And the candy man himself, Mr. Sammy Davis Jr. stops by to talk about his life with the Rat Pack. Plus, what does cocktail shakers, liquor bottles, and juggling all have in common? Find out on another hot episode of Front Row Center. Let's roll that opener. I'm Honey Love. And I'm Zach Fuentes. Well, you know everybody is wondering what we've got up our sleeves this week on Front Row Center. And we never cease to amaze anyone. So, Zach, take it away. Gladly a fiery praying mantis, unique restaurants, and a treehouse that even adults wish they could play on. This park of shipping containers, made of shipping containers, has attracted people from all over the world. Nakaya Berry has more on this destination that has helped to put downtown Las Vegas on the map. The Container Park in downtown Las Vegas adds a new concept of dining, shopping, and entertainment to the city. Don't be surprised when you're greeted with a giant praying mantis at the front gate. I think it's quite unique. I really like the mixture. It's eclectic. It's, it's different. I mean, you can get anything from vintage jewelry to a pulled pork barbecue sandwich if you want. It's really cool. It's just such a good vibe here. We have live music and we have good food. and good drink, so it's just been a real fun place to be. Every business in this offbeat shopping center are housed in repurposed shipping containers that would otherwise be put to waste. As you look around, I wouldn't even think that this was a container. It's very comfortable in here, um, and that's how it is in each container. Actually, the containers are more spacious than you think. You do have to be creative with your space, but it works. I've never been to a place where they actually put containers together and made retail outlets for, and so it's just a, it's just a fascinating concept. These days where I think there's a lot of waste, I think it's great that they're making use of something that was used for something else. So definitely being green is, is a huge factor and one that I like. Adults can shop or have a drink while their kids play in the treehouse in the middle of the park. They love it. We don't see them. They just play and check in. I wish I was a kid so I could just like go through their little playground they have back there. The park and the playground turns into allowing adults only at 9 p.m. The unique space also has live entertainment almost daily. I like having the music here. It just adds, adds a little bit to the atmosphere. It's fresh and up and coming and it's got a really community vibe and hit places to eat. It's a nice little hangout. It's inexpensive too, so it adds for the locals. They have somewhere to come now. The Container Park provides a diverse experience for locals and tourists. Reporting for Front Row Center, I'm Nakaya Berry. Whether you begin at an early age or later on in life, hula hooping is one of America's favorite pastimes. And my first guest is proving that no matter what age you are, it's never too old to learn the art of hula hooping. Please welcome to Front Row Center, Kimberly Isabella is amazing Blake. Wow, that's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Kimberly. Thank you for having so, me. So you got started hula hooping at 34, is that correct? Yes, 34. I, a friend had a hula hoop at her house and I picked it up and tried it and kind of liked it, thought it was kind of cool and then I just played with it off and on here and there and uh, started learning some new tricks and watching videos online to try to, to up, up the ante on the skills of learning how to use the hula hoop better. Is it true that you never hula hooped as a child? No, never, never played with a hula hoop when I was a little girl. I was a skateboarding, cl really? tree climbing kid, so. Really? Uh, no hula hoops when I was a girl. So how long did it take you to get to where you are in hula hooping? Um, I've been hula hooping now for seven years. This is my seventh year continuously playing with this hula hoop. And um, I, I really started getting better at it about four years ago, mm -hmm. around 2010, because I decided that I was just going to keep playing with the hula hoop and doing it more and more and I s noticed a difference in how I felt about myself, um, how you know my health seemed to be getting better, um, like I was sleeping better, you know I was happier. Um, so I started doing it more and more and, and it felt great to do it. I know I heard you lost 
a lot of weight just by hula hooping. Like, who knew? Mm, yeah, in the last uh, two years specifically, I've lost 65 pounds wow. strictly from hula hooping all the time. I, I do it three to four or five days a week. Uh, just whenever I get a chance, I pick it up and do it. Now, your stage name is, your name is Kimberly Blake, but your yeah. stage name is Isabella is Amazing. Yes. Where did that come from? Okay. Uh, Isabella came from when I used to do sword fighting in a group called the Society for Creative Anachronisms. And after I left that group, the hula hooping community just thought my name was Isabella. So I just kept that. And then uh, I started performing in the community here in Vegas around 2010. I started performing in public, starting out at the Arts Factory. And um, everybody just kept saying that I was amazing, you're amazing, she is amazing. And, and it just stuck, and I'm using that. Um, and it seems to you know, get a lot of attention, and it's really good for a business name. Yeah, mm -hmm. Isabella is amazing, mm -hmm. I love it. Now, you also do this with fire. I do. <laughs> How long did that <laughs> take to master hula hooping with fire? Um, hula hooping with fire is a whole nother art in itself right. because you have to learn the, the safety of manipulating the fire and keeping it away from your body so you don't hurt yourself. And um, that came with a, a community group um, of fire dancers. And uh, I, I saw the videos online and thought, oh, that's what I got to do next. I've already got the hula hooping down. Now I want to learn something different with it. And, and it's really just, uh, it's ignited something inside of me to, to continue using the fire as another tool for hoop dance. Is the hula hoop that you use for fire, is it, I'm sure it's metal, but is it, how much heavier is it than hula hoops? Actually, it's, it's not made of metal. It no. is a tubing similar to the hoops that we use for, really? for practice hoops. And um, just the material is a little bit more dense mm -hmm. and uh, the equipment actually comes off. So the wick is not on the hula hoop. It's extended away from the hula hoop a little bit. So um, not quite on the hoop, just right. a, a little space away. Right. So, so yeah, you can use, I can put wicks on this hula hoop. And this won't catch on fire? Oh, well, it will. How many times have you been um, burned? I've lost count. <laughs> is it that many? Oh no. Because it is dangerous. Right. I mean, uh, most of the injuries I've incurred, uh, uh, no, sorry, not incurred, but the, most of the injuries I've, I've had were from the metal touching my skin. The metal gets hot, The metal right? gets super hot, and, and that's usually what ends up burning is the, the metal touching the surface of the skin. And usually the flames, they're far enough away that you can keep them at bay, but the metal hits you, and that's where you get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. All right, everyone. So Kimberly is going to be showing me how to hula hoop. I'm going to work these hips just a little bit. But first, she's going to show us some of her tricks of the trade. So take it away. Thank you.
Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now Kimberly is going to show me how to do a couple of tricks with this hula hoop. Now, why this hoop? Uh, why this hoop? This hoop is a good size for beginners. Okay. Um, it's about a 41, 40, 40 inch hoop. So um, if I, you know, for beginners, get 40 to 41 inches. Yeah, it just inch depends. It's, it's, a lot of times they want you to have it to where it's like right at your navel. Okay. And so it's based on your height and your shape and uh -huh. a couple of different things. I'm curvy and tall. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I first started, I was using 40 inch hoops. Okay. I'm down to like a 36. I can even do 34s. So okay. You know, it depends on your skills. Okay, so, so let's do this. All right, so you're gonna put it in your back. Uh-huh. And you're just gonna throw it. Just throw it and, and then, then shake your hips. Pump your hips a little bit so that you push the hoop around you. There you go. Ah! Oh my goodness, this is so this is a workout. I have it, it, not it, it is aerobic. hooped since I was a child. Okay. <laughs> now <laughs> Now show me how to do something like on your arm. How okay. do you do that? Um, something simple like uh, if you keep it in this little space in your hand, okay. um, I call it the well of your hand so that okay. you keep the hoop uh, in, in this thumb space. Okay. Um, and if you take it and you just grab the hoop like here and just kind of push it over your hand. Keep it in front of the thumb so that it stays in the well of your hand. Okay. There you go. I hope you got oh. it. Very good. <laughs> uh, Kimberly, I found something I'm good at. <laughs> Let me tell you, we had tap dancing on the show. We had stepping. I was not good at either one of those things. <laughs> but this right here, okay, hold on. Awesome. I, I missed it. No, this might it. actually work. So, mm -hmm. how many classes would I need to take to get pretty decent at hula hooping? Well, um, I, I have, currently I have a couple of students that have been taking private lessons uh -huh. and um, just in the two or three lessons that they've gotten, they've already picked up so many tricks. They, they've learned how to do lifts, uh -huh. they've learned how to do, um, you know, moving your feet. People think if you just hula hoop and you gotta stay still. You can move. Right. You can yeah, you were all dance the floor around. With it. Boogie boogie wiggle wiggle. Uh -huh. You know, the more you move, the more fun you're having, the less it's exercise, the yeah. more it's fun. Well, you know what? I'm going to do this <laughs> to lose some weight, everyone. Kimberly Blake, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, everyone. If you want to learn how to hula hoop, Kimberly Blake is offering a class on August 23rd from 4 to 6 p.m. You can also find her on her Facebook page at Kimberly Isabella is Amazing Blake. Coming up after the break, he was billed as the greatest living entertainer in the world, and he is scatting his way back to life right here on Front row center so don't go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> He performs every night at the Rio Hotel and Casino alongside of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Joey Bishop, and Peter Lawford. Not only does he sing, dance, and act, he also plays musical instruments and does stand-up comedy. He is the multi-talented Mr. Sammy Davis Jr. Hey, hey. How Welcome. are you, baby? I'm yes. good. Oh, I like it when you call me baby. Well, thank you. I'm even better. I'll <laughs> tell you that much. So how's it been with the Rat Pack? Oh, you know, baby. You know, Frank Sinatra's crooning his tune, Dean is drinking his drink, and Joey Bishop, he's making us laugh. And we can't forget the lovely Marilyn Monroe. Oh, Marilyn. Yeah. You got Marilyn over oh, there yes, with you. Yes, yes, So, Sammy, do you do a little flirting with Marilyn Monroe? Oh, any chance I get. <laughs> now, Frank Sinatra gave you the nickname Smokey. Oh. Where did that come from? Well, you know, I must tell you, back in my heyday, I smoked three packs of cigarettes every single day. Three packs yeah. of cigarettes? Sammy, that's so bad yeah, for you. Yeah, but it was good. <laughs> All right, everyone. This isn't really Sammy Davis Jr. This is actually Nicholas Brooks. He performs as Sammy Davis Jr. in the Rat Pack is Back at the Rio Hotel and Casino. Yes. Thank you for being here, Thank Nicholas. Thank you. A pleasure to be here with you. So tell me, what goes into preparing for Sammy Davis Jr.? Well, it takes a lot of YouTube watching. 
and reading the books, mm -hmm. studying with a choreographer, vocal coach, all of that stuff to really get the mannerisms and the essence of the character. How long did it take you? You know, it, the thing about it is, is you know, you, you do a bunch of months of the working on it, but then, you know, it's a work in progress. So you need, literally they always say, you need about 30 shows to really get it. So while you're doing the shows, you're still honing your craft. Okay, and you're also a singer in your own right. You got it. How does your music differ from that of Sammy Davis Jr.'s? Well, I mean, I've, I've been influenced by so many different artists, so I like to infuse jazz with the pop, with the adult contemporary, all of that, because, you know, Big Man is great, but I like to mix all the genres together. Who are some of your influences? Michael Jackson. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, you know, I listen to everybody from Barbara Stry Streisand to Luther Vandross, you know, the 80s hair bands, uh, you name Elvis, anybody. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of all of them as they've contributed so much to music. Now you tour all over the country. And the world. And the world yes. as Nicholas Brooks. I do, and, 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 and with Sammy. the Rat Pack, yeah. Really? I do. And so how has that been for you? It's been great, you know, um, seeing the world is something I never envisioned. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I feel so blessed that show business has allowed for me to see all these great countries and meet great people from all over the world. It's been great. And I heard that you were at one point the youngest headliner in Las Vegas. Yeah, well, one of the youngest. One of. Yeah, and it was a great time in the Wayne Newton Theater to perform on that big stage and have a band behind you at only 23 years of age. 23. And the name and lights, which was, uh, it was just a real great blessing and I had to pinch myself. At 23? How did, how did that hit you? I mean, wow, did you lose your mind? It was wild. <laughs> and I could only imagine. Yeah, it was just a great start to being in such a great city. It was just, it was a magical time for me. And so what's next for Nicholas Brooks in the future? Well, More TV actually had done an episode of CSI Miami and The Defenders on CBS. So I actually would love to be back on the big screen. It's great being on screen here mm -hmm. now. And so I want to pursue that a little bit more as I've been live performing for, you know, 12 years now in Vegas. So TV, that's what I'm that's feeling. That's a long lifespan out here in Vegas it for is. you. And I have to tell you this, Nicholas, you're much better looking than Sammy oh, Davis Jr. Oh, <laughs> stop it in 15 minutes. <laughs> you are. Thank you. All right, everyone, Nicholas is gonna give us a little sample of his performance as Sammy Davis Jr. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank wow, you. you really got those moves down uh, packed. I'm trying. <laughs> You're going to have to show me a couple of those oh, moves when we go to break. <laughs> All right, everyone. You can find Nicholas Brooks at his website at nicholas-brooks.com. And you can also see him performing as Sammy Davis Jr. in the Rat Pack is Back show at the Rio Hotel and Casino. Coming up after the break, the art of bartending has taken on a new flair. Plus, if you're trying to make plans for this week, Zach lets you in on all the events happening. So don't go anywhere. Front Row Center will be right back. Okay, so it was something like Yeah. That? yeah. And then you cross. And then you cross. Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> I was scared like okay, I can't do this. My team depends on me. And my team is fifty thousand strong. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Bartending has come a long way from the people you'd see behind the bar at a place called Cheers. It's really become an art form. Here to show us and tell us what bartending with a flair is, is Terry Borianoff and Alexei Balashov from the Las Vegas Flair Academy. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. Alexi, we'll get to you in a second, but Terry, can you tell us, for those who don't know, what flair bartending is? Yeah, flair bartending is actually, a, it's an entertainment form of bartending. It's, we flip bottles around, we juggle them, where we entertain our guests. It's not necessarily just the juggling aspect of it, but we're, we're comedians, we're entertainers, we like to joke with people, just draw them into the bar and entertain them in any possible way to keep them to stay at our bars. What made you want to get into it? 
Um, I actually started hanging out with some flair bartenders and just for fun I started flipping bottles around and uh, one of them entered me into a competition. Didn't even know they existed, but after my first one I was hooked. Being on stage was, it was a great place to be. No, and you hear a lot about these competitions now and stuff and you see fl flair bartending wherever you're at. Um, do you do people prefer to be called bartenders in this or mixologists? I hear that's kind of a controversial thing. Is that something completely different? There are the different forms of bartenders out there. Um, it's kind of an ongoing battle sometimes between oh. certain mixologists and flair bartenders. Where um, flair bartenders, we, we respect all art forms or all styles of bartending. Mixologists are some. A lot of them are very proper and I think their way is the best way. Oh, got it. So there is there a competition <laughs> within like what you do, the flair bartending? Yeah, there's competitions all over the world, and um, there are a lot of flair bartenders who consider consider themselves mixologists as well, oh, okay. and a lot of mixologists that do know how to flair. So um, we all respect one and one another and what we do. So it, do it doesn't ever get dirty or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like anywhere in life. <laughs> yeah. What can you say? Yeah. <laughs> so really quick, Alexi, you think you can show us some stuff? Yeah. Show sure. us what flare bartending is. <laughs> All right, take it away then. Is this choreographed or you guys do the spur of the moment? How does it work? It depends on how long Yeah, you can come back over here. Like uh, competitions, it's, there's rules, you have a routine that you do. I couldn't even do this in yeah. my wildest <laughs> dreams. Yeah. But anyways, we're gonna head to break. I know Honey wants to get into those bottles there. Yeah. So, <laughs> thanks so much for being here. The next uh, Flare Academy class will be held on November 10th through the 11th. You can sign up at lasvegasflareacademy.com. We're going to head to break right now, but when you come back, we'll have a list of events and activities for you to enjoy, so stay with us. Hey, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Look. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Welcome back to Front Row Center. Thought you were in store for an uneventful week? Well, think again. There's something always going on in our 24-hour city, and we'll help you sort through some of the events. August 12th, Ghost the Musical comes to the Smith Center. It's all a part of their Broadway season two. Tickets start at just $28 and the show runs through the 17th. Starting August 14th, SOE Live is set to return to Planet Hollywood. If you're a fan of Sony Online Entertainment, then this really is the event for you. Gamers will get the chance to celebrate favorite free-to-play games like DC Universe, Dragon's Prophet, and EverQuest. This event also runs through the 17th. August 15th, Dog Whisperer Caesar Milan brings his Leader of the Pack tour to the Palms Theater. Caesar will help you have a happy, healthier relationship with your dog by letting you see the world through their eyes. Tickets are selling out quickly, so be sure to hurry up and get yours. Do we have any heavy metal fans watching? Well, one of the pioneers of the genre is set to give a free concert in downtown Las Vegas. Deep Purple will be performing at the Fremont Street Experience's third stage at 9 p.m. That also happens on the 15th. We know him as The Godfather, Scarface, and many other classic roles. Now you can see Al Pacino in person for one night only. August 16th, Pacino will take the stage at Mirage's Terry Fader Theater for an on-stage interview. After that interview, there will be a Q&A session for the audience, so it's not that often a celebrated actor like him does something like this. So get your tickets quick at the Mirage's website before they sell out. So Zach, another great show, right? We had so much fun yeah. today. Yeah, what time is it? Um, you don't have no, a watch. I don't have my phone. I think it's 5 o'clock. You know what time that is, right? It's 5 o'clock somewhere. 
happy hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so much fun watching the flair bartender. It was. I, like I said, I couldn't do that at all. But you know what's funny is that he got off set. He was doing his tricks and everything. He got off set and was just carrying them and he dropped them. He did all of that. Did drop <laughs> and them. And then dropped it. Um, yeah. I wish he dropped some alcohol. <laughs> yeah. You'd be on the floor. And a like, cup for me. That up. <laughs> they, were, they were empty. Yeah. There was no. Was like, yeah. Pouring, we like, didn't drink anything if we're crazy just because we're crazy. Yeah, I'm always <laughs> like that. Yeah, and Mr. Sammy Davis Jr., Nicholas Brooks. Nicholas is still Brooks on the set. still on the set with us, having hanging a good time. Hanging out, yes. hanging out. I think we're yeah. all going to go have happy hour somewhere. <laughs> exactly. It's a little bit of classic Vegas with the new stuff, the clear yeah. and everything. Yeah. And what about the hula hooping? Have you ever done hula hooping? I, I tried, failed. <laughs> I yeah. hadn't done it. I was surprised. I was a lot better at doing that than anything else that I've done on the show. Like the tap dancing didn't work. <laughs> the stepping didn't work. I have no coordination. But the uh, hula hooping wasn't that bad. It's all about like well, moving yeah, your hips. Like, Let me move see. Your hips. Yeah. You can't see. See, I'm trying to like do a belly dance, but I have like the suit on and everything. <laughs> it's not working out. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll go take the class. Together okay. Yes, and learn we will. It. That's a good workout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I can use a couple. Lose a couple yeah, pounds. We can too after the chef last week, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still full off that macaroni I and know, cheese. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Next week is the finale of Front Row Center, and we're going to be looking back at some of our favorite moments from this season and last season. And if you want to tell us some of your favorite moments from the show, email us at frontrowcenterlv at gmail.com. You can also find our past shows on unlv.tv. Also, you can jump on Twitter, follow us at FRCLV, and don't forget to use hashtag FRCLV to tweet us to keep that party going. Let's Keep it going, baby. Like always, from the entertainment capital of the world. It's, it's Vegas, Vegas baby. baby. And it's all right here on Front Row Center. See you next time. Bye.